Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to a Toast to the Men Network with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Go ahead and hit that like button, toasters. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified when this content drops. Let's go. Toasters, I want to talk about this Charleston White versus T.K. Kirkland drama. It is drama. But I want to get into why this started. Why they connected anyway from the beginning? Why they fell out? Why did they clash? And why and how did we get to this point? Now, just to give some some history, what happened, who these guys are, if you don't know. T.K. Kirkland is a comedian. He's been in the game for a while, probably close to 40 years. Uh, funny guy, original style. I don't know who would be the father of his style. Um, it's probably a collective of many comedians, but I can't just name one comedian who I can say is the father of T.K. Kirkland's style. He is uh, an original. Um, like I said, been in the game about 40 years. Uh, checker pass. He, he admits to that. He's very transparent about his checker pass. I found out a lot about him throughout the last, the last few years watching him on Vlad TV. And uh, just know things he's done, uh, his uh, felonious capers, his uh, you know misdemeanors, his present time, his shady ways in the past. Um, you know he uh, infamous, infamously stole a Rolex from Eddie Murphy's house. Now I don't know if that Rolex belonged to Eddie or his brother Charlie Murphy, but he stole the Rolex. They, they immediately knew who stole it because he was the only guy around. And uh, Charlie and TK had a fist fight and that severed the relationship. Um, TK said he spoke to Eddie uh, maybe a couple of years ago, ran into him and apologized. And Eddie was like, hey man, that's water under the bridge. No problem. He said, but that was very important to him to apologize because they had done nothing wrong to him. And it was just came natural for him to take the Rolex. It was sitting there. I think Charlie was washing his hair. It was sitting there on the cabinet in the kitchen and he took it. He just took it. He said, I don't know why he took it. He took it. Um, yeah. And so, um, but he's very transparent about his past. And according to him, he's changed his ways and he's on a mission to tell people, hey, you can have a checker pass, you can do some wrong things, but you can redeem yourself and come back and try to make amends for that and live a good life. But you gotta be a good person. And uh, he said that's, that's been his mission. Charleston White, uh, Dallas native, checker pass as well, went to uh, juvenile prison for the uh, unaliving of a, of a man in the uh, parking lot mall at the age of, uh, I believe, he had to be 14, 15, something like that. Um, he was with a, a couple other guys. They were young, too. So he spent quite a quite a few, uh, number of years in the juvenile system, the prison system. Released, I believe, after seven to eight years. And he's very transparent about his plight, about his past. And he says he's on a mission to show the youth, show men you can redeem yourself. You can have this past and that doesn't have to really be your ending. You can redeem yourself and live a good life, but you gotta be a good person. So these brothers are very similar. You know, they didn't do the same crime, uh, but they're very similar. Both been in the penal system. Uh, both had some shady ways, uh, check a pass, uh, like many of us do. Uh, but yeah, that's that's just like a, a brief synopsis on the on these two gentlemen. Charleston has been on a roll lately. You know, I met Charleston probably two years ago at a birthday party at a cigar lounge, of course. And uh uh we took a picture, we chatted up for a while. But even before that, we used to converse on Facebook before he was on IG or YouTube, we used to converse. 
And uh, I thought he was funny, man. I thought he was funny. Thought uh, he was witty. And uh, never thought he would, he would be at this point in the comedy game. But uh, here he is. So, you know, I look back, man. I'm amazed at, uh, you know, his progression. So, you know, it's something to awe and to be an eye of. So, <clears throat> yes, uh, uh, that's Charleston, man. That's Charleston. He's very controversial. Uh, you know, a lightning bolt. You know, um, you know he, he will say some things that get your attention. You know, polarizing, and that's his thing. That's his thing. That's his shit. And you know, he, he thrives on that, and it got him to the point where he is now. But very intelligent, brother. Very intelligent. But if you listen to him, if you watch him, you can see he still struggles with some issues, like many of us do. Uh, I know the brother just looking and listening. Although he comes off as confident and sure of himself, very insecure. You can tell it, man. If you really can listen and watch, you can see, you know, behind the curtain, very insecure. Uh, but he's fighting through it. You can see he's fighting through it, though. But I think he reacts and has certain outbursts because of that insecurity. Um, because uh, he doesn't want to be taken advantage of, taken advantage of, you know, from his size, his height, his stature, uh, to his glass eye. And so... You know, very insecure about that. I'm sure he's insecure about his past. You know, that follows you. And so, um, you know, and that just might be the thorn in his side to keep him humble because he is intelligent. He is witty. He is charismatic. And so sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, man, we got to have something to keep us balanced uh, or we'll go off the rails. We will, including myself. So we got to have something that's going to keep us balanced, keep us humble, keep us looking up to our higher self knowing that, hey, we ain't quite made it. We got work to do. And that may be his thorn in his side. And we all got him. We all got a thorn in our side, man. But, so, CW, Charleston White has been on the roll. And he's gotten the attention of TK, a veteran in the game. Now, according to TK, he reached out to Charleston White. He wanted to mentor him. He wanted to Toolage him, take him under his wing, and he said he's never done this for anybody since he's done it for since he did it for Mike Epps. But uh, according to TK, he's had a lot of people under his wing, man. Um, uh, Epps, D.L. Hughley, um, man, I can't remember the other comedian's name, uh, but even Sandra Bullock, she's not a comedian, but he managed her uh, early in her career. Uh, quite a few people, um, but you know, TK's like, I saw something in a young man and I wanted to take him under my wing and, and uh, you know, move forward. Now, just playing devil's advocate or being objective, TK, I don't believe 100% did this out of um, good, good heartedness. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. He saw the win in it for him. You got this comedian with this young energy. Now, CW is not young, but, you know, but that's that's relative. But he's not young as an age, but he's young in the game. And he has young energy, this new energy, I'll say. He has a new energy. It's on fire. It's, it's lightning. It's polarizing. Everybody's paying attention. He has a great following. It's controversial. I'm sure TK said, if I can get this brother on my bill to tour with me we're gonna sell some tickets we're gonna bring them in i'm sure he did now i've noticed in the comments man well we'll get back to that so these guys go on tour these guys go on tour and cw says he's told in the beginning before the tour started he could sell he could sell his merch once he gets on the tour, he's told he cannot sell his merch. Now, if you know anything about, you know, uh, comics, I've been to uh, quite a few comedy shows. And at every comedy show, man, except the most recent one, which, which I'll get to, <laughs> they've sold merch. Yeah, uh, Arnaz J, uh, Michael Blackson, uh, Corey Holcomb. Um, I mean, I've seen a few, man. I've seen quite a few. Um, 
And they've all sold merch. All of them. That's a way to make their money. That's the way a lot of people make money. Make money. Entertainers in general. Selling merch. Now, since CW is not the headliner, he's not going to be getting a big take of the money. You know, that's going to be TK. TK is the headliner of the show, of the tour. He's taking a big take of the money. He said he's taking 90% of the door. That's huge. 90% of the door. So, you think he will not want his people to eat. So, I don't know if Live Nation said CW couldn't sell his merch or was that coming down from TK. Either way, I mean, you're cutting the brother's legs off if he can't make money. You know, to add fuel to the fire, CW says he was not paid on time. He was not paid on time. He had to pay for his own trips, his own flights, his own room and board. He was not paid on time. Actually, he he hasn't been paid at all. According to TK, that's just the business. That's corporate America, he says. Now, I know 30-day net, 60-day net. I think there might be a 90-day net, maybe. I know there's 60 and 30 to where, you know, an invoice isn't fulfilled until 30 days uh, after it's, it's turned in or 60 days after it's turned in. I don't know if that's the way the comedy game works. I don't know if that's the way Live Nation works. But TK says that's normal for that business. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me if it's normal. It wouldn't surprise me if there's something shady going on. And that's the thing, man. When you have a past of being shady, to being a trickster, to being manipulative, even though you're transparent about it, even though you might have turned over a new leaf, redeem yourself, did some great things, after which that sticks in people's mind. It really does. People don't forget People put a scarlet letter on you. They won't forgive you totally. It's in the back of their minds. And I don't know if it should be or not. You know, uh, it happened. So we got to live with whatever we did, right? Even in the midst of redeeming ourselves and and, uh, trying to make amends. We got to live with what we did. Uh, And that's all of us. But people most times will not be transparent about their transgressions, about their iniquities. But as soon as you are, well, as soon as they know something about you that highlight your stuff, or if you're transparent about your past, your shady past, you know, they're highlighted and holding against you, but they won't come out and be transparent about their own stuff, not publicly. Uh, So, you know, I salute CW and TK for for being those transparent brothers. But just know people are going to hold that against you. If there's anything questionable going on moving forward, they just they just are. Now, in CW's case, from the outside looking in, he's always getting into it with somebody. Friends, compadres, uh, business partners, managers. It seems like he cannot get along with anybody. He's the common denominator. So looking on the outside, it's like, man, he's always into it with somebody. It's like, I knew this would happen, though. When I saw these two were connecting, I said, it's just a matter of time before they clash because of Charleston White's history. It just, it is what it is, man. And I can't say if it's his fault or the other people's fault. Either way, he has to be accountable because either it's something in his personality that severs the relationship or causes, you know, tension or contention, or he's just a bad uh, judge a character. Either or, he has to be accountable for that and say, and say, man, there's a weakness in me. Either I need to change, you know, my energy, or I need to, you know, be more, uh, have more discernment of who I bring around me. And a lot of times, when we bring the wrong people around us, it's because our motivation is not pure. Our motivation is not pure. And people see that those two energies connect and those people attach to us because our motivation is not pure. We're in it for the wrong reasons and we're attached to the right people for that energy. And so he has to take some accountability for that. TK, you know, um, Corey Holcomb has come out with stuff recently 
saying how TK's a bully. He bullies other comedians, shorter comedians, smaller comedians, female comedians. Uh, comedian Cruncho Cruncho has come out and said uh, TK, you know, can be very condescending. You know, he had to he had to knock TK out. You know, I don't know how long ago that was, but uh, yeah, he's like, you know, he has no respect for TK at this point, and so. People have their take on TK. And I also noticed, like, the people that TK said he had under his wing back in the day and managed and helped out, they never really give TK his flowers. I've never heard Mike Epps mention them, I don't think. Sandra Bullock. Um, uh, man, there's another guy, man. Uh, I cannot remember his name. Funny guy. Now, he did have TK on his podcast. Damn, I can't remember his name. But anyway, uh, DL has mentioned TK when asked about TK. And DL said he did some shady stuff with his with, with DL's wife's dental insurance or something. I don't know. But, uh, you know, people got to think different things, man. Uh, why did these two connect? Like I mentioned before, the motivations were not pure. It was purely based on opportunity. These two are opportunists in this situation. I can't say arbitrarily they are, but it looks like they are arbitrarily. <laughs> Throughout their lifetime, they've been opportunists. And so their thing was money, the money, the money, the money. It wasn't about they respected each other. It wasn't about they loved each other. It wasn't about they liked each other. It was about money. This person has something that can propel me to get something else or or uh, or move me in the direction to acquire what I want to acquire. They both had this mindset, both of them, opportunists. Charleston wanted a certain thing, TK wanted a certain thing, and they connected purely on that. Now, I hear people say all the time, you don't have to like who you work with, who you do business with. I used to think like that. Um, I could not be in total agreement with someone uh, with their beliefs. I think our principles have to align, but I must respect the person I'm doing business with. Um, if you don't, this type of thing happens. I must respect the person I do business with. And I've been in situations where I've done business purely on opportunity. They know the person, you know, when in partnership on a club, on a lounge with some ladies, didn't know them like that. And my motivation was purely because that's what I wanted. That's what I always wanted. And this opportunity was here, even though I don't know these young ladies and I call them young, they're older than me, but I don't know these ladies, but here's an opportunity. There's no respect that's been established. There's no like, no love, it's purely opportunity. And guess what? We end up clashing. We didn't know each other. We didn't have a rapport. They needed help. They needed a partner for the funding, for the capital. I always wanted a lounge. And here was the opportunity for both of us. And we ended up clashing. Point blank. So respect has to be there, man. I don't know if you have to totally like a person, but I think principles have to align. Maybe not beliefs, but principles do. But respect must be there. These brothers did not respect one another. And this is why this has happened. Now, for two gentlemen who proclaim to be uh, brought up from the streets, uh, claim to be real men, real ends, real ninjas, they have taken the social media and portrayed the total opposite of that. You know, and Charleston has a history of that. You know, I have no dog in the fight, no horse in the race. I'm just being objective and keeping it real from my perspective. Charleston has a history of that, being very emotional, spilling the beans, not knowing how to uh, problem solve or uh, have conflict resolution behind the scene. And you're going to run into this, man, anytime, what I've noticed, anytime you deal with men, who were not brought up and reared and raised by solid principal men. You're always going to run into this thing. Um, 
point blank, man. There's no way around it. Now, I didn't grow up with a father in the home, but I had solid men in my life. Solid men that watch over me to this day. From deacons, preachers, pastors, uh, coaches. They watch me to this day. And they'll comment on my post, on my YouTube channel, on my, my Facebook post. They'll comment. They follow me. And these men are in their 60s, 70s, 80s. And uh, so, you know, I must adhere to something. To, to someone above me, a mentor that I look up to. When you don't have that, and I think I mentioned this before in another video, you'll become reckless. Man, you must submit to something. You must submit to something. A man that does not submit to anything is a reckless man. You must submit to something. Now, ultimately, we're going to submit to our higher selves, you know, uh, but you must adhere, submit to something, revere something. <clears throat> and when I say revere, I don't mean, <clears throat> sorry, I don't mean uh, fear. I mean have a respect for. Yes, a deep respect for. If you don't have that, you'd be out here reckless. And Charleston's very reckless because he doesn't have that. It's obvious he was raised by women. They might have been strong women, whatever that is, but... It's obvious he did not have strong, solid men in his life. But the brother is gifted, and I think he's needed. He's actually needed. His voice is needed. But um, And we all have our things, you know, that we need to work on, those thorns in our side. In our side. But um, I think that's his thing, man. So the way he reacts is the way a woman would react. And that's no disrespect. It's just, it's just a fact. But when you're raised by solid men, solid principal men, yeah, you don't react the way he reacts, you know. So, and I was kind of surprised TK took the bait, but um, and he responded too. And I think he responded because, like I said, he knows there's some truth to what CW is saying. There's some truth to it. And like I said, TK's motivation was not pure. It was not purely to give CW an opportunity he saw the opportunity for him. Yeah, and uh, that's just what it is. But I believe I lean towards more CW's take on this. I think he could have handled it differently, uh, more professionally. And uh, But I lean towards more with, with his storyline and his take on it. Uh, but yeah, that's the thing, you know. It's hard to outlive your past. And so... You know, when you look at the comments, people move the goalposts, the principal goalposts, uh, depending on the person they like or dislike. You know, they don't hold people accountable or they hold them to a high standard, depending if they like them or dislike them. The people most times cannot be objective. But, you know, I get it. I understand, you know, human nature. I get it. But, yeah, these brothers connected um, from a place of selfishness both of them and so this was gonna happen yeah there's no way around, no way around that this was gonna happen but went to a comedy show recently went to go see TK Kirkland and CW and uh, they were at the House of Blues in Dallas went to go see them and my boy I grew up with, grew up in the church with, Corey Cap Hill. He was there. He was on the bill. I didn't even know he was going to be on the bill. But as I was walking up the steps into the, into the venue, I saw him outside. I'm like, damn, man, you here? He said, yeah, I'm on the bill. So, man, we embraced. And that was a beautiful thing to see, to see somebody you grew up with, was in church with as a youngster, be on that bill, you know, on the bill with T.K. Kirkland in the House of Blues. Man, that was a beautiful thing. And he did his thing, man. Corey Cap Hill check him out he did his thing but um you know eventually cw came out and let me tell you man i was impressed i was impressed i was shocked he looked like a veteran so i don't know what happened in these other cities you know tk's talking about where cw bombed i'm not saying he did or didn't i'm speaking on what happened in dallas he did his thing he did his thing. Uh, it looked like a veteran. Timing. Sorry. Timing was on point. Tempo. Cadence. Uh, jokes. 
uh, stage presence. He looked like a veteran. He looked like a vet. He looked like he can carry a show by himself. Yeah, no cap. He he really impressed me. He did his thing. He was funny. He was really funny. Storytelling was on point. Uh, yeah, storytelling was on point. Really impressed with him. Uh, so he did his thing. So, like I said, I don't know what happened in these other cities, but in Dallas, he showed out, man. Standing ovation. TK, that was my first time seeing him. TK did his thing. You can see he was on the upper echelon of veteranship. CW looked like a veteran, but you could tell TK was on another level. With with everything I complimented CW on, he got an A on. TK got an A plus. But he's been in the game for damn near 40 years. But so that says a lot about CW. That's a big compliment to CW. But TK's that real deal, man. He's the real deal. First time ever seeing him live, and he's the real deal. Uh, I was impressed. I was he was funny, storytelling on point, man, timing on everything, man. Everything. You could tell he's been doing this for a minute. Yeah. So you know, it's a shame that these brothers couldn't really get along and continue to build off of this because, man, I'm telling you, that would be a dynamic duo, you know, or a bill, a dynamic bill. Of course, they would have to have other people on the bill when they travel to city to city. But I'm telling you, man, with CW on that bill and TK, man, they can, they can have a hit every city, man. Uh, now... The venue, how do I say this? The venue, the venue, uh, there were a lot of people there, but it was not at full capacity. There were, there were, I would say about, I would say about 30, 30 to 40. Yeah, I'd say about 30 to 40 more people could have, could have came in and had seats. It's what it is. So both of these brothers need to humble themselves because although TK has been doing it 40 years, he cannot sell it out to full capacity. Although CW is doing his thing and he's a Dallas native. He's a Dallas native. That's where he got his start. He cannot bring it out and sell it to full capacity. I was there. I was there. I was looking around. I was there. But like I said, both these brothers was funny, hella funny. I enjoyed myself. Um, But yeah, man. And lastly, man, I saw, you know, CW's uh, brother and homeboy, Dewberry, uh, do a video, give his take on it. Um, You got to take Dewberry's take on it with with a grain of salt because Dewberry's not objective. He's not objective. Uh, He's, he's loyal to CW, maybe to a fault. And so this is the thing, man. <clears throat> you don't have to out your people, but you got to show some objectivity or just be quiet. But if in every video, in every statement, your boy, your family member, your friend is always right, that's a problem. And that's disingenuous. You know, that, that's just not truthful because we know our boy, our friend, is not always right. Uh, you got to show some objectivity. If someone is always wrong, I don't trust that either because you're telling me this person is never right. Yeah, I don't trust that. I don't trust that. There's nothing you can say good about this person. And just the opposite on the other end of the spectrum. There's nothing, you know, uh, bad you can say about this person. You know. But sometimes, even if Dewberry would say, without going into depth, if he could say, my boy could have done some things differently. But, you know, you ain't got to throw your boy under the bus. But if you're going to be speaking often, you got to show some objectivity or people just going to take what you say with a grain of salt. And 
you can't be trusted, man. Your word can't be trusted. We can't take it seriously because you go in 100% in defense mode. And come on, that's not real. So, and I get it. That's your boy. But uh, and he might be saying something to him behind the scenes. I don't know. But if you're going to get on camera, man, you got to do something to show some objectivity. That's just what it is, man. But uh, hopefully, you know, that's the end of this. And they figure it out. Uh, but of course, you know, TK, he probably is going to go on and tour and keep doing his thing. I think that's great promise for CW. But yeah, this boils down to both of these brothers came from uh, impure places. Yeah, selfish, opportune, uh, opportunist mindset places. And uh, they collided. Rightfully so, though. Let me know what you think, Toasters. As always, from me to you, love. Peace.